Um, so my name is Iris Weinchel, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at the New York Public Library. I'd like to welcome you to this um, public meeting, uh, the second um, that we're having in a series regarding the Stephen H. Schwartzman Building. Um, I'm joined here this evening by um, Bill Kelly, our Mellon Director of Research, and Liz Lieber, who is a partner of Bayer Blinder Bell, uh, the firm that is working with Makanu, the uh, Dutch firm that we hired uh, to not only do the Schwartzman building, the master plan for the Schwartzman building, but the firms that also developed the plans for the Mid Manhattan Library. So um, after years and years of discussion, of learning, and of listening, we've announced a master plan for the Stephen A. Schwartzman building. The $317 million master plan, which is a first step in preparing this beloved and important building for the future, calls for about 20% increase of public space, more seats for researchers, the transformation of long, underutilized, beautiful spaces for research and programs, and more exhibition space. It also calls for much needed new entrance on 40th Street, a center for reading and learning to help prepare the next generation of researchers, a vastly improved infrastructure and flow through the building, including bathrooms, elevators, and more. This work, which is slated to begin in 2018, is the continuation of improvements we've been making in this building for years, including the expansion of the underground storage for our research collections, the restoration of the Rosemain Reading Room, and many other improvements. This master plan is the next step, and for us here at the library, it's an exciting one, as this building and what it offers represents is more important than ever in the world in which we live. It's important that we plan for a productive and successful future. The plan, which to be clear, is an outline for what we've been going and what we want to be doing, was developed with feedback from members of the public, including researchers, staff, and other key stockers, stakeholders. We held meetings, conducted surveys, had individual discussions, and we will continue that work as the details of this plan are now, are now worked out in the design. We thank you for being here and for sharing your feedback. It is indeed very helpful, and we really welcome this feedback from the public. As you have no doubt read, at the same time we move forward with this master plan, we have also commissioned the study of the central stacks to identify possible long-term plans. That 175,000 square foot space offers a tremendous opportunity for the future, and we're going to take our time, work with stakeholders, and evaluate that space to make sure we develop a responsible plan. As I mentioned, the Dutch architecture firm Makano and the New York-based firm Bayer Blunder Bell developed the master plan and will also do the stack study. We thank them for their work. And with that, Bayer Blunder Bell's Liz Lieber will take you through the plan. Just want to make apologies for Francine Hogan. She had to uh, go back to Holland this week, and she could not be with us this evening. Afterward, myself, and my colleague, Bill Kelly, our Mellon director, will join Liz to answer questions. So um, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Liz. Thanks, Iris, and hello, everybody. So Iris covered a little bit of our introduction, but um, today we're going to talk a little bit about the objectives of the master plan as it was laid out, some of the preparatory work that has been done before the master plan, what the components of the master plan are, and then we'll have a Q&A session. So the master plan objective was to complete a phased renovation of this building. So just to make it clear from slide one, there's no there is no plan to close this building. This is a vital and important and large building. So we are going to do a phased renovation of this so that we will try, we will keep the operations going at all time. Um, it will address structural, infrastructural, and programmatic needs. 
minimize the impact of building operations and services, and support long-term renovation priorities. And some of those goals are to modernize infrastructure, as can you, you can imagine with a building of this age, the infrastructure needs are always evolving over the years and the decades, and the, the building, to be the best stewards to this building, we want to make sure that those systems are being updated. We want to improve circulation, clarify a building that inherently has logic to it from its era, its original era, but some of that circulation has gotten confused over time as the functions have, have evolved on each floor. We want to increase public space. As Iris said, a 20% increase in public space for this master plan. And wherever we possibly can, we want to preserve and restore original features of the building. So Iris alluded to the fact that a lot of work happened in the past years before Fire Blender, Bell, and Meccano were brought on board two years ago. Um, there was an assessment of programmatic needs in this building and building conditions. There were user surveys research, site visits to other libraries to see how libraries are evolving these days, engagement of many different parties, including trustees, staff, elected officials, civil, civic organizations, and other stakeholders, and public town hall meetings. Um, when BBB and Meccano were brought on board, we took the program that had been developed and we validated it through a series of meetings with um, the staff here at length and verify the building conditions of this building. We did early work in this building, particularly at the ground floor, in preparation for the Mid-Manhattan Library to swing into this building that has already happened and opened this fall and is underway. And as you probably all know, that we are under construction across the street, which is very exciting for the new Mid-Manhattan Library. Um, we have had trustees working group meetings. We work with a group of the trustees who give us guidance along the way and we have developed a proposed master plan, which is what we're showing you today. So before we get into the details of the master plan, we believe that the best overview is this short film that we developed to explain the vision for the master plan. building is a magnificent example of Beaux-Arts style architecture and has symbolized the democratic ideal of free and open access to knowledge since it opened to the public in 1911. Today, the Schwarzman building welcomes millions of visitors a year who find inspiration in its majestic public spaces, unparalleled research collections, and vibrant programs and exhibitions. Over time, Due to increased visitorship, introduction of new technologies, and changing needs, programmatic functions have been scattered throughout the building. The renovation will restore elements of the Beaux-Arts design, arranging the building so that public functions, like exhibition spaces, remain on the ground floor, while quieter studying and research functions are distributed on higher floors. The renovation will significantly improve the circulation of people, goods, and collections throughout the building. A new 40th Street entrance for visiting groups will make it easier for everyone to get in and out of the building. And the introduction of a new elevator and stairs will dramatically improve building-wide accessibility. Public space will be increased significantly by relocating underutilized back-of-house staff, and support spaces in order to open the ground floor and other areas on the street level for public use. Entering the main entrance off Fifth Avenue, visitors to the Schwartzman building will discover a number of new amenities on the first floor. They can explore library collections on display in new exhibition galleries browse a spaciously renovated retail shop, or grab a quick bite at a new cafe and lounge.
those of you who were there here for the last public meeting that we had a couple of weeks ago, I know that this is a shortened version of what was shown then. What we took out were the talking heads. Um, that was <laughs> Tony and the chair of the board and um, some pictures of some Francine and some pictures of me. Um, but those were all taken out and it was adding color to the story and the vision of that. And if that's not already posted online, I'm sure we can post that online as well. So um, the, the film talks about a vision for um, the use of this building or enhancing the use of this building. Um, but we had to think of it as a master plan. It can't all get done at the same time. So we worked very closely with the library and with the trustees to determine what the, those priorities would be and how to think about this in a series of phases. Um, we didn't want to think of it just in terms of how to do it from a construction point of view, but really what were our goals and how were we achieving them at each phase. So you can see in the left column the objectives of infrastructure, shared amenities, research, education and exhibitions, and program event and public space. And in each one of these phases, we addressed how these projects address those objectives. Phase one is really the foundational work that has been done to date since 2006. And we really, we think of that as phase one for the master plan, but it's because it's a good deal of work that's already been done to the infrastructure in planning for the future and for restoring and retaining aspects of the building. Um, that includes things like behind the walls, things that, that many of you may not see, but I'm sure will appreciate, like a new data center, um, improvements to the fire alarm, entirely new fire alarm system. Um, chiller replacement, um, the facade, uh, the fountains out front, um, and restoration work. Um, there's shared amenities, the fountains restoration, as I said, there's been staff support space that we've helped to bring online. In terms of research, um, obviously the Milstein research stacks, the book handling and delivery system, the work in the Rosemain reading room recently opened, as well as the Bill Blast catalog room, um, and then the picture collection room on the first floor. Um, the Goddessman Hall ceiling restoration for exhibitions and education, which is in preparation for the treasures exhibit that we'll talk about in a bit. Um, and then work has been done in the Hansman's room, Hansman room, the Bartos back of house to let events that happen on the ground floor happen more smoothly and to allow for the swing space from MML to come in. And the phase one work is about, it has been about $144 million of project cost um, to, to date. Phase two will be another $145 million worth of work. And we'll show you the highlights of phases two and three in more pictures and renderings and description in this presentation. Um, but the, the big investments that we're making are obviously that there are building systems that have to still be improved, including providing adequate ventilation and heating and air conditioning to the new public spaces that we'll be providing, um, the cafe lounge, Bathrooms will be renovated throughout the entire building, which is something that a lot of people have commented on as well. In terms of research, we have work in the Lennox and Astor rooms, which we'll show you. That's on the second floor, and a seminar room that's associated with it, and the stack study. And we are, um, we're going to have the Center for Research and Learning on the ground floor, a treasures exhibit, and additional exhibition space. Um, the Bartos Forum will be upgraded, and the multi-purpose room and room 84 will be the current children's library once the children's library moves across the street to MML. Phase three is a, a, the second priorities of work after phase two is another $28 million worth of work and includes um, improvements to the north elevator. So we will have created a new south elevator core on the south side of the building and a stair, and now we'll have that will be a pair to the north core, so we'll have more easy access to all floors of the building. We'll improve the wayfinding system throughout the building, cleaning, um, additional multi-purpose rooms on the second floor, and then um, select um, improvements to this auditorium as it will have been 20 years old at the time that we're going to be completing phase three. And that is a total, as Iris said, of $317 million worth of work. So in phase one, as you know, a lot of this work has been completed, almost all of it, including the Milstein research stacks, the Rosemain reading room, the fountains, and staff support space on the second floor. In phase two, as I described, these are the, phase, the phases um, that we're really launching into the heart of the design of the master plan. 
So we have some renderings to go with this with key plans that show you where those renderings are taken from. And I should just let you know that a master plan is a roadmap and it helps to create a series of priorities and make sure that near-term decisions do not compromise the long-term decisions that we want to make for the future of the library. These renderings are to give an idea of what the design might be, but they are not designs. And there is a long way to go in order to create a master plan and then take it to, to the design phases that take quite a while to go from design and documentation to bid it and get it into construction. So we are only at the starting point of the road. So this is the new 40th Street entrance. So I am standing sort of levitating over the loading dock area. Um, and you can see here in red, that's where it's highlighted. So the loading dock is here. And as many of you probably know, all the staff enter through the loading dock door. Um, and that loading dock is severely inefficient for the, for the needs, inadequate for the needs there. It is built for a scale of truck that does not, um, does not accommodate what is needed today. So we're going to be making modifications along this facade, which includes as well the creation of a new set of doors from a set of windows that exist today into space that is partially being occupied today. This is where the MML swing space is. We're going to create space here for the new Center for Research and Learning, which we'll show you a rendering for, too. So there's mechanical space below here. We're going to drop down that mechanical space to create an entry plaza on 40th Street, which will alleviate the pressure that is felt at the other entrances and really make a, a place, for example, for school groups to come into. This is a rendering showing a possibility of um, how the space might look within the Re Center for Research and Learning. So this is one of the spaces that's occupied by Swing right now. And the idea here is to, first of all, wait, as, as we started to do the Swing space, we uncovered original finishes that are underneath, um, whether it's carpet or other materials that have been put on over the years. But there are this tile on the walls and tile on the floors. And we always love to uncover this and see how we can make best use to re restore the original materials. These materials are quite different than the materials on the floor above because this was a an area that was serving the library rather than a fully public space. So we would like to make this space into a muster area, an orientation area, and then classrooms for high school and college age students who will be coming here to learn about primary research um, rather than relying on their phones and Google. <laughs> And that would lead to, which is closely associated to, um, to the idea of a new treasure exhibit in Robinson Hall. This is where the true treasures of New York Public Library would be displayed. We call it a rotating permanent collection. So this is all out of the permanent collection of New York Public Library. But as you can imagine, first of all, there are many treasures to show. And second of all, some of them are sensitive to daylight. So they sometimes, or to, even to light, so they need to be rotated. And we also want to tell a complete story. But the idea here is to restore, keep the beauty of Godisman Hall, which is truly an amazing, amazing space, and create a treasures exhibition that will be a destination for groups and for uh, visitors. Um, the MAPS storage room right now, which is just to the right of Astor Hall on the first floor, so right here, is this is the MAPS reading room on the corner. There will be no change to that room. The MAPS storage room um, right now has MAPS storage in it in a space that has a lot of daylight, um, and it is not a public space, and it is a priority to make sure that those materials are cared for well, and we would like to move them out of that space, so that's primary. And the second idea is that we want to make that into a public space. One idea for making that into a public space out of many ideas is to create a sort of cafe and lounge, almost like a reading room. It would be a reading room with cafe use as well. So this, again, is an idea that's very much in formation. But this is just an idea of how we would like to restore that room um, and then bring it to public use for all to enjoy. Um, Opposite, Walkenheim, so if this is Godisman Hall with the treasures, Walkenheim is an existing special exhibition space. What we're proposing is to move the current location of the library shop, which is spilling over its boundaries because it is so successful. We want to move it and put another exhibition space there, so there's a clarity of having three exhibit spaces off of the main axis of Astor Hall and then move the library shop into the first floor of South Court, where there are two classrooms and an orientation space. And this would have an ability to 
not only to have um, expanded space for the library shop, but also to consolidate some of the back of house operations that happen that work very closely with the library shop but are dispersed throughout this building right now. This is a project that's actually already in progress, which is the Lennox and Astor collection will be housed in the Lennox and Astor room in room 216, um, off of the balcony level here. Um, and the, these actually are actual renderings of the space as it's um, is going to be. And this is a flexible space for researchers to have seminars and show materials and documents. And it will have, not only will the shell of it be restored, but it will have contemporary lighting and AV and other technology. And it's accompanied right next door to it to a seminar room, room 217, which also will be restored and have the proper technology for seminars and also for viewing of materials. The Bartos Forum is going to be upgraded. It really needs acoustic and AV upgrades, um, some lighting upgrades, the HVAC systems need a bit of an upgrade. So a lot of this is not touching what is the wonderful shell of it, but just um, making good infrastructure upgrades to it. And then the current children's library space, um, we would create into a multi-purpose room that could be used for seminars or it could be used in association with the Bartos Forum. You can imagine the types of plenary sessions that might happen in Bartos Forum and then you have this as a pre or post-function breakout space so that NYPL sponsored programs and events can happen here as well. So for the phasing of those projects that we just discussed, as well as the projects that I didn't show renderings of, like the new South Elevators, but those were mentioned in the, in the film, is that in early 2018, we will be starting design. That's everything that's shown in blue here. Um, and then we would be starting construction in a sort of staggered way through late 2018 and early 2019. Um, some of this work cannot be completed until the Mid-Manhattan Library swings back into its permanent home. Um, which will happen by um, the beginning of 2020. And then um, we will complete that work so that by the end of 2020, phase two will be complete. In phase three, as I said, there were select items that we put in phase, phase three. That includes some upgrades to the multi-purpose rooms that are opposite from the Lennox and Astor reading, uh, Lennox and Astor room and the seminar room 216 and 217. This suite of rooms as well, which actually are split up that way that as they are originally, um, will be upgraded. And this is just showing a view of the Shuichi Noma room as an inspiration, showing that we want to bring these rooms also back to their original um, state and have them as flexible, smaller rooms, which is actually something that has been requested a lot, this idea of having smaller collaboration rooms for researchers. And then finally in here, this room um, also receives its share of complaints, particularly about back of house technology, there's some acoustic issues, um, and so we will be making upgrades to this um, room as well. And the phasing of that is while we're in construction for phase two, we would begin design on these projects, and then we would complete these projects by the end of 2021. I just also mentioned that we're embarking on a stack study this, this winter. Um, so this is about exploring a series of scenarios um, without a final decision on the disposition of the space there. It's just a way of exploring it and understanding the potentials, both programmatically and functionally. Um, and the idea is to do a lot of exploration through the fall and winter, um, a series of visioning sessions with the NYPL, and then we would put together some pricing scenarios in the spring. And again, the, the results of the stack study are really merely a launching point to start the discussion about the potentials of the stack study. So that's the, the roundup of it. I land again on, on the full picture of um, all the projects that comprise the master plan. And we'll go to Q&A. Thank you, Liz, and thank all of you for being with us this evening. Let me echo Iris' uh, gratitude for your presence. I'd like to summarize a couple of key points before opening the floor to questions and comments. First, as you've seen from the presentation, this is a phase plan. The first part of the plan has already been completed. That's, for my, to my eye, the major part of the work. Restoration of rows, of Bill Blass, the Milstein Stacks, 
the facade, the book delivery system, and the preparation for uh, the MML swing space. Phase two, again, as you've heard, the key pieces of this, long overdue infrastructure improvements, HVAC, elevators, bathrooms, opening of additional reading rooms on the second floor, moving the, a new gallery onto the, uh, into Astor Hall, and moving the shop into South Court with an eye toward restoring Astor Hall to its uh, grandeur and grace. The opening of a research and learning center, uh, converting what's now storage space into a useful programming space for high school and college students focusing on the tasks, the skills, the pleasure, the beauty of research, of archival research, and partially in response to uh, the surveys that were done in the reading room, uh, the opening of a cafe for researchers uh, to, and visitors to the building to use. Major attention, this has been my um, hobby horse throughout the two year process since I've been here, which is attention to segregating research and exhibition space to promoting quiet spaces on the second and third floor. It's a public building. We can't build cages around space and insist that people can't come without being vetted, but we can do everything in our power to manage traffic flow and by putting exhibition space um, on the first floor, hoping to maintain the quiet and the quality of research on second and third, opening more reading rooms on two. Um, questions and comments. If I may ask those of you who spoke at the last meeting to hold your fire until others have a chance to speak, and then we will turn. Yes, sir. Uh, 